Please have a seat. And if you have your Bibles with you, go to Luke 6. Luke 6, the Sermon on the Plain. Matthew did a Sermon on the Mount, not the Mound. Not, not baseball fans, he wasn't on the Mount. Okay, Sermon on the Plain. Jesus preached and taught, and he did repetition. So that's why sometimes it's like, well, Matthew's version is a little different than Luke's. Yeah, yeah, because um, he didn't say things just one time. And I welcome Wesley. I can see uh, over Wesley across the river. I see uh, that you're still, still at the back. Uh, that's okay. Maybe for a while I see Sophie and Joey. Good to see you guys over there. So if you don't know, Wesley uh, Methodist Church over in East Dubuque is one of our campus churches. And so the sermon is live streamed in there uh, right now. So I'm, I'm welcoming them. So if you went there, and if you are there, Jesus says a lot. <clears throat> and each thing he says here is worth hearing. But he's leading up to something, okay? And so I'm going to read it because, again, every, every bit of this word of God is good. As he looks at people and he says, um, starting in verse 39, he says, uh, Can a blind person lead a blind person? Will they not both fall into a pit? A student is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. He's trying to talk to us and them about following him, Jesus, the ultimate teacher, to be like him, okay? Um, to not follow blind guides, which are like the Pharisees. Then he says, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the board in your own eye, which is a great image, right? Like a plank, is what he says. How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye? And you're a hypocrite. So first take the plank out of your own eye and then you'll see clearly to help remove the speck from your brother's eye. No tree, no good tree bears bad fruit. This is great logic. No good tree bears bad fruit. Nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. The good man, the good person, brings good things out of the good stored up in their heart. And the evil person brings evil things out of the evil stored up in their heart. For out of the overflow of the, mouth, of the heart, the mouth speaks. This is great teaching. And you know... <clears throat> It can stand on itself, right? This whole, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's going on in your head, what's going on inside with your feelings, your emotions, um, that's gonna come out. And Jesus is saying, therefore, then be careful and pay attention. In, in other words, to, to get it down to a practical level, if my head and my heart are dominated by anger or hate or victimhood, Right? If that's what's going on in my head and my heart, it's dominated, or I'm, in, I'm dominated by a sense of entitlement, or a sense of, of self-righteousness and holier than thou, or, or arrogance, right? Or uh, I talked about this last week in the sermon about, about consumerism, selfish consumerism. What have you done for me lately, right? If that's what's going on inside my head and heart or your head and heart, it's gonna come out. Does that make sense to everybody? And usually it's just like, if all that kind of negative stuff's going on in head and heart, we usually at some point puke it all over somebody else, amen? Yeah. And those folks are fun to be around, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> so so on the, Jesus is saying, what's going on in here and here, it's gonna come out, okay? You know, you can put lipstick on a pig all day, but there's a point where, you know, it's gonna come out. In the same way, the good thing is, if, if, if our thinking and, and our feelings are dominated more by things like trust of God, loving God, loving other people, or, or attributes like humility, patience, gratitude, then uh, I will speak like Jesus. Does that make sense to everybody, yeah? In fact, that's where I started going this week. The whole first part of my sermon is kind of a mistake. Now, it stands on its own, it's fine, but the, we have that list of about 40 songs that people have sent in, uh, contemporary Christian songs that they're listening to that they like. And so um, this week, this week um, I just hand that off to Alec and say, you, you know, you've got to arrange the music and the musicians and the singers. And so um, the song for this week that he picked was I Speak Jesus. So when, when I just saw the title, before I listened to it, before I went to the lyrics, I'm like, 
Yeah, this dog will hunt. This will, this will preach. Yeah, like, like out of the abundance, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's like I started putting together a whole sermon on, like, I speak J- Jesus. Like, I speak English. I don't speak it well, but I speak English, right? I, I don't speak uh, Spanish. Or, or some people, um, we speak NFL, you know, right, right, Roger? Okay, the Raiders fan in the back. Meaning what? We, we know about this. We talk about it. Some people, you speak computers, okay? You, you know that language, and, and, and maybe it's your workplace or whatever. I'm like, okay, I get it. Like jargon, like, like you're into something, right? Like really into something. I speak Jesus, meaning I'm going to speak love, and I'm going to speak forgiveness, and I'm going to speak grace, and yeah, that'll be a great sermon. Well, I mean, at least an okay sermon. Fair enough, okay? So um, um, then... I said, that'll be a great follow-up. I speak Jesus. It'll be a great follow-up to last Sunday. That encouragement for the next 30 days, the next 20-some days, to maximize your gratitude to God, to, to consciously be aware and work on saying, thank you, God, and to minimize your complaining. I've heard from some people this week, and they like that challenge. Is anybody uh, with me on that? You, you kind of liking that? Okay, you know, and, and then I came across some people that heard this sermon last week, or maybe they didn't hear it, but I thought, you might, might need to hear that sermon I preached in this slide on a loop for 24 hours, okay? <laughs> you know, because some people just can't help themselves, right? And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I called out my friend Roger in the back, who's a Raiders fan. I couldn't help myself last week during the Raiders fan. I texted Roger and said, are you complaining? <laughs> are you complaining? Did you complain about your team? You, you, oh, okay. As they were getting kicked all over the field, Roger's saying, oh, how unfortunate. Oh, how unfortunate. <laughs> it's something to work on, maximize. So I'm like, this is going to be great. I speak Jesus. But that's not what this song is about. That's not what the song's about. Once I got into the lyrics and listened to it, I went, oh, like, like on Thursday, I think. You know, um, I went, oh, I've been going the wrong direction here. This song, how many of you know this song? Is anybody familiar with it? Okay, you're going to hear it today during communion. Okay, they're going to sing it. But um, uh, let me start summing this up. It's about caring for someone so much that you intervene. It's about caring for someone so much that you mediate, right? You come in between. You try to act to help them, to protect them to save them you come in between it's like people do this all the time so for example uh, these folks right firemen and the police and EMS people and and doctors and medical professionals they come in between people and a danger if you're tracking with me and that makes sense say yes you come in between Sarah you're a nurse and so you see that you're like Maybe you've never thought about interceding. You're like interceding, coming in between people and their medical thing and, um, and, and, and a healing and a help and all this kind of stuff is intercession. It's like, oh, that's what, that's what this song, that's what this song, I Speak Jesus, is about. It's about intercession, and that's another big word that it's a good one to learn today. You, you, you know, you know, substitutionary atonement and intercession. If you're not familiar with that word, that's okay, because I'm going to talk about it a lot now for the next 10 minutes, okay? Is it intercession is coming in between, like one of the most famous stories of intercession, of somebody interceding to help to protect and actually to save lives is the story of Oscar Schindler's anybody know about this guy okay amazing story it's a true story a true story during World War II he was an industrialist and he and he started out taking advantage of 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 Jewish people like slave labor but his heart was moved and he began to intercede right and he used his influence and he used his money and, 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 and bribed Nazi officials to save over 1,000 Jewish people from the Nazi concentration camps. He, he interceded. He got between the evil of, of the Nazis and these human beings, right, and used everything he could. He interceded to help them, protect them, save them. He gave them food. He gave them shelter. He gave them medical care. But this song isn't about that either. It's not about it, and I want to be clear, because that's an amazing story. And, and, and it's, a movie, it's a movie that always makes me cry at the end. Anybody else get choked up? 
He just wanted more, right? He's like, I just, you know, that's not enough. Okay, but this song isn't about what humans do. And this is an important point to get. This isn't about people doing the work to help protect, to save. It's about calling on and praying. It's about asking for God to help, to protect, to save someone by speaking the name of the great, greatest intercessor. It's like, here are the lyrics, right? I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there's peace within your presence, okay? That's intercession. I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break, declaring there's hope and there's freedom. I speak Jesus, meaning I speak Jesus into and over, and I use Jesus as the key to open the door to access God, and I'm putting somebody in front of God through Jesus. He's the great intercessor. We t- I talked about when we came in uh, uh, setting up communion about, about um, substitutionary atonement, about, about Jesus died because God hates sin. And so all of humanity's sins, right up till now and going forward, uh, were on Jesus on that cross. The full wrath of God was on that cross. Um, so, so that uh, God hates sins, and if we don't get forgiven, if we don't get um, um, uh, repent uh, we're not in right relationship with God we're not at one moment we're not experiencing at atonement okay with God so Jesus made it happen and he said like when he instituted the communion meal um, uh, which I'll do that last part in a little bit that when he poured the wine out it was it was very figurative like the, the and, and literal he's like this is my blood the blood of the new covenant the blood um, because certainly Jewish people understood blood we may not so much because that's not part of our life of, of, of blood sacrifices and all that but Jesus did and he said this is a new covenant his blood means his life okay and so because that happened and this is an important point to get it means that through Jesus our sins are forgiven and we can approach God It means that our sins are forgiven when we faithfully pray and ask God to forgive us our sins in the name of Jesus and because of what Jesus did. That puts us in a whole different position. It's like, it's like, that's the power in the name of Jesus. The power in the name of Jesus because it ushers us into the presence of God. You know, uh, we we may not uh, be aware of or experience with ushers much, most anymore. Like once upon a time, their ushers would usher you to your seat in the movie theater, right? Okay. Once upon a time, when people came in to worship, the usher would, would, would take you down and make you sit somewhere, but people got to be too independent, right? And so like a lot of fights started, like I'm not sitting there, right? I'm sitting in my seat, you know, right? Are you listening over there, Wesley? Are you with me? Um, <laughs> Everybody's at the back today. I can still see you over at the back. No room for visitors. Sorry, no room at the end. Go up front. Okay, so, um, you know, this is a serious thing. So we don't do ushers, right? We don't do ushers that escort you to your seat. But the concept is when, you, when our sins are forgiven through Jesus and in his name, we are ushered into the presence of God. The other way that I put that is it's, it's a benefit, Right? It's a benefit that we have uh, in the name of Jesus, but through his blood, through his death. The other way, the image is, I've used it a couple of times, I'll say it again. It's a key to pray in the name of Jesus because, because we've been forgiven through him is a key that unlocks the door of communion meaning communion with God, meaning right relationship with God, meaning uh, uh, relationship and, and presence of God. And, and because our sins are forgiven through Jesus' death, his substitutionary atonement, it means we're forgiven, we have communion with God and access to the Holy Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit of God, that's the, the energy, that's the power that brings things that we need. And I want you to hear that. The Holy Spirit of God is is how God then acts in our real lives to bring things like guidance, right? Like praying, in the name of Jesus, God, I don't know what I'm doing or where I'm going, please help me. That's a fair prayer. I'm asking for guidance. And God promised that the Holy Spirit will bring it. For wisdom, 
In the name of Jesus, I need wisdom to make this decision. God, help me to figure out what to do for strength. God, I'm not strong enough. I'm not able enough. I'm weary. I'm tired. It feels like life's been beating me up and kicking me down, right? And so you pray in the name of Jesus, help me. Send the Holy Spirit. And maybe it's for energy. Maybe it's for healing. Maybe it's to carry you like that wonderful poem that many people like, The Footprints in the Sand. You know that one? Okay, right? Maybe that's your prayer. In the name of Jesus, carry me right now, God. Um, carry me, you know? Speaking Jesus matters, right? Like the lyrics, some more lyrics to that song. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression. Why? Well, that lyric, this lyric, this, this, uh, whoever wrote it, I don't know if that woman, Charity, what's her name? Charity? I don't know if she wrote it. Doesn't matter. Okay. Um, what's going on here? I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Well, she's writing that and singing that because of that belief and that faith of everything I just said. Is it using his name because of what you believe and what's been promised and that you have access to God, right, is going to make a difference? over all fear and all anxiety. This is a prayer for intercession, is what I'm saying. Speaking Jesus, speaking Jesus, uh, access to God. You know, it really can make a difference. And maybe this is that teaching part that I'm doing with you all here and over at Wesley, is, is to, to begin this simple thing, not because it's magic, but we have something. We have something that can change lives. We have something that can help people. Let me, let me give you one of my favorite examples, right? It's this. It's Peter and John were on the way to the temple. It's in the, it's in the book of Acts, okay? And, and um, you know, if you have your Bibles, you can go there if you want. It's the third chapter of Acts. They're on their way to the temple to pray. It's after Pentecost. And there's a beggar that's always carried out to beg because he's dependent on other people, Right? And, and his legs don't work, his ankles don't work. And so he, he assumes that Peter and John is going to give him some money because this is his life, all right? This is his life. And so they see him, and Peter looked at this man, as did John, in verse 4 and 5, and Peter says, look at us, which is fascinating. Like, make eye contact. I need your attention, all right? And so the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. And then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And it says that they helped him up um, uh, uh, onto his feet, and the man's feet and ankles became strong, and he jumped to his feet, began to walk, went into the temple, uh, leaping, praising God, right? Point, we have something that they have. As Peter said, silver, gold, Peter said, I don't have any of that. I haven't got a nickel to my name, as the message puts it, right? But let me tell you what I do have. I have this faith, and I have this trust, and I now have this knowledge, says Peter, that in the name of Jesus Christ, there's power. And in the name of Jesus Christ, like this quick intercession, in the name of Jesus, he's saying, hey, Jesus, heal them. Peter didn't heal him. You all understand what I'm saying? He didn't do that work. John didn't do that work. The Holy Spirit of God, through Jesus, the intercessor, healed this guy. This is something that we have. This is something that we can do. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do more of. You know, um, let me tell you something here at Grandview. We've got some amazing groups of people that do good, good things here that make a difference, and we all benefit from it. Okay, I'm going to list a few of these, okay? There's some, there's some groups here at Grandview that do things, and we all, we all benefit, okay? Like the green team. Now, if you don't know what the green team is, that's the people that mow and do all the trimming of all of our grass out there, right? Matt in the back, you're on the green team, right? Hannah, ever help you with that? No. Okay, that's all right. Okay, because it's not just guys, it's men and women. They do, we all benefit. You come in here and it looks nice and, and, and if nothing else, you dr pull into Grandview and you say, well, if they care about their landscaping and grass, they surely are gonna care about me, amen? 
So thank you, green team. They do a great job. The people that are the hospitality hosts that do the coffee and the juice and the, and the, and the tea and, and put out the cookies and, and, and bags of goldfish, we all benefit from that, right? We all benefit from that. Um, maybe you get one cookie. Maybe you get eight. Doesn't matter. Take what you want. Right, Matt? You take what you want. One time, Matt, like some visitor, he's like, hey, hey, that's a lot of cookies you're taking. And it's like, great. We never saw that guy again. No, we don't know. <laughs> Hospitality people, you do good things. We got some people that knit and crochet, and they make, they make prayer shawls for people. Okay, they, they meet a couple times a month. They make the baby blankets. When we baptize babies, we wrap the baby in that blanket. That's something we benefit from. On Wednesday nights, there are people that come in, and, and, and you can be part of this. You can be part of any of this, by the way. And they cook, and, and they prepare the food uh, for families with kids in the home so that the families uh, can come on Wednesday night. You don't have to go to McDonald's. You don't have to eat late. Come here and sit around the table and eat together. And these women and men on CFX on Wednesday night, they do it, they put the food out, they serve the food, they clean up the food. We all benefit from that, is my point. Sunday school teachers are down the hall right now teaching, right? The, the youth leaders on Wednesday nights and, and, and during the week, um, they're doing great, amazing things. I love it. They, the the, the uh, worship tech people, right? We've got worship tech people that are behind the scenes on cameras and up in the booth and, and, and all over. You know, they're doing some great things and we all benefit. But let me tell you a group that benefits you the most. Are you listening? I want you to listen. There's a group of people that come together every single week and they benefit and help you and me more than any other group. And the groups we have here at Grandview, I know I didn't mention, if I f failed to mention your group, remember you're gonna maximize your gratitude, minimize your complaining. <laughs> like, ah, he didn't mention my group, I guess he doesn't like us. <laughs> so, so here's a group, <laughs> here's a group of people, I'm gonna say it again. They, they meet every week and they are giving you and me the best, most loving and powerful gift that someone can give, okay? There's a group of people that come together and in the name of God, in the name of Jesus, they're praying to God for God to intercede and I'm talking about our prayer shepherds, okay? Some of you are, are right here with us. Just raise your hand, okay? I don't want to embarrass you so Patty's here, Becky's here, okay? Jan's here, Mel, um, Mel might be at 1045, okay? I want you to hear me say this. I'm not pandering. They're doing something that I do, okay? Not because we're heroes, not because we need um, to be constantly patted on the back, but it's this thing that our prayer shepherds do is they pray in the name of Jesus for God to intercede and to help you. They may not name you individually, but it's like when I pray for Grandview, when I pray for Wesley, when I pray for Center Grove, I can't list everybody individually, but I trust that God knows you. Does that make sense to everybody? Our prayer shepherds are praying for you. I can say that with full confidence. Patty, you agree with that? We pray for you, okay? And sometimes individually we pray for you. And Marlene is over at Wesley, joins us. We're praying, and again, I'm gonna say it, that is the best, most loving, gift that we can give to people, right? That they give to us. And now I'm turning it to you. Not only do uh, I encourage you, I encourage you, you see all the times here. You can come if you're available. Come, okay? You don't have to pray out loud if you don't want to pray out loud, if that's not your thing. You don't have to like have perfectly constructed prayers. These are faithful people that sit down, share a scripture, and begin to share prayer concerns for the week, including, I'm trying to get into the routine of going in and saying, here's my list of prayers that are, that are on my heart this week, and spend some time with the prayer shepherds because I, I, I love and, and what they're doing. And I want you to understand what they're doing. And I want you to understand, again, it's a great, great thing that they're doing out of their faith and out of their love, praying for someone else. Putting their name in front of God in the name of Jesus is more valuable than silver or gold. Amen? I encourage you, at the very least, to thank them. Okay? Because it's a big, a big thing. And now apply it to yourself. Because maybe this is an area in your life that you could use some growth. And what I'm talking about specifically is speaking the name of Jesus, okay? Speaking the name of Jesus and praying for Jesus to intercede on your behalf. Try that, do that, right? Like 
God, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of my sins. God, in the name of Jesus and because of Jesus and because of all your promises, help me right now, God. Or maybe it's a, an area that you need to grow and, and you just maybe haven't thought about it. You haven't thought about every day praying for your children. If you have kids, are you praying for those children, even if they're unborn? Are you praying for those kids every day in the name of Jesus? What about, what about your grandkids? Some of you have grandkids. Every day you're praying in the name of Jesus, God, please protect them. Please provide for them. Keep them safe. If you have a spouse, every day you're praying for them in the name of Jesus for their protection, for whatever it is they need, for your family, for other people in your circle that are in need. I'm encouraging you. It's right up there with the 30-day gratitude challenge. I'm encouraging you, church, here, Wesley, online, Add this to your practice, is to intentionally and faithfully pray in the name of Jesus for other people, for their comfort, for their health, for strength, for wisdom, for salvation, for your kids, for your grandkids, for, for the people in your life. And then that last thing, church. Man, I just dream about, I think, what would it be like, what would happen if more and more people are giving the gift of love and faith and more and more people are praying in the name of Jesus for the church. What's that going to look like? What if, what if more and more people are praying in the name of Jesus uh, on my congregation here, Wesley? Uh, God, grow us spiritually. God, grow us as a people and as a place that's marked by grace that's marked by forgiveness, that's marked by, by um, uh, a, sense of, a sense of gratitude. What would it look like if we turn this over to God in the name of Jesus, that we say, God, grow us. We wanna be the aroma of Jesus. We wanna be the light of Jesus Christ. So I encourage you, may God help all of us to better speak Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's pray about that, please. Lord God, you do know us as we are, who we are. And you know the kinds of things that we're challenged by. Lord, you know the situations uh, that are beating us up, kicking us around. So in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that you intercede. As you look at your people, as you look at your children right now, all those that are tuned in and that can hear my voice, as you look at them, Lord God, I pray, intercede. In the name of Jesus, Lord, if they need healing, heal them. If they need help with grief, if they're lost and trying to figure out life, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, heal them. If they're angry, if they're full of bitterness, heal them in the name of Jesus. I ask for this intercession for all of us. And all of us pray together out loud, both those here in this building, those online, those at Wesley. Let us join our voices and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. Speak Jesus, because your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn light. 
just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression I speak Over it. 